What happens when the battle lines are drawn? What happens when the balance between good and evil is outweighed? What happens when the human spirit is torn apart by victory, defeat, glory, and gold? Tonight, these men and these women find out how it feels to leave it all on the line, to fight until the war is finally over. Tonight, these actions will leave the issues between individuals unforgiven. Becky Lynch has been waiting for this moment, a chance to right her wrong from the grandest stage earlier this year. Opposing her is one of the most dominating and intimidating women to ever grace between the ropes. Becky prepares to meet Asuka once more in a battle of epic proportions. The Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar, has set his target on Matt Riddle, and he plans to make the original bro regret his victory from months ago. This won't be a battle with title implications. This is simply a war of payback. Matt Riddle looks to prove he is the better fighter, but Lesnar looks to make Riddle fear his fury. Every bridge you burn may just come back to haunt you. Seth Rollins' vile actions nearly ended the career of this great wife. However, Sheamus is back and seeking ultimate retribution. With the WWE Championship stuck between the battle of good and evil, who will emerge holding the richest prize known to mankind? Tonight, scores will be settled, and those worthy look to seize their opportunities. Tonight, live from Chicago, Illinois, Monday Night Raw brings to you Unforgiven. We come to you tonight from the All-State Arena in Chicago, Illinois for the second half of a deadly doubleheader weekend. It's Monday Night Raw's exclusive live premiere event, Unforgiven. And we kick things off no bigger than the almighty Bobby Lashley. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Colorado Springs, Colorado, weighing in at 273 pounds, the almighty Bobby Lashley. We want to thank you for joining us live tonight from the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. Last night was a super successful SmackDown Live No Mercy event from Baltimore. Thank you all for joining us last night as well. And this epic weekend concludes here tonight in Chicago with this Monday Night Raw exclusive Unforgiven festivities. And we kick things off, as we mentioned, no bigger, no better than the almighty Bobby Lashley, a man who in his mind's got a score to settle with the young upstart Carmelo Hayes. Hayes scored an upset over Lashley two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, but had the feet on the ropes to leverage the pinfall and really sneak away with that victory over the almighty. Lashley has not forgotten now that turmoil has spilled over to Chicago tonight, and Lashley's looking for a little bit of retribution over a former NXT champion, former North American champion, former Cruiserweight champion, and a man who has been taking Monday Night Raw by storm with MVP and Trick Williams by his side. A man who's got that it factor, Carmelo Hayes. his opponent from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing in at 210 pounds, Carmelo Hayes. Well, Carmelo Hayes debuted a part of the Monday Night Raw brand several months ago and only has one loss on his record ever since his Monday Night Raw debut. And certainly the biggest win of his career on the red brand was that victory over Lashley two weeks ago with the feet on the ropes, as we mentioned. It's not that Carmelo Hayes didn't give Lashley a fight, because he absolutely did. But that little bit of leverage obviously could change the trajectory of a pinfall and certainly allowed Melo to walk away with the victory on that occasion. Carmelo Hayes, we've spoke about it to no ends. Absolutely going to be a future piece of the Monday Night Raw main event scene. But it's one, nights like tonight where you prove your status here on the red brand, where you prove you got what it takes, where you prove you got what it takes to go to the next step in WWE. 
And that's what Carmelo Hayes needs to do. But I don't think Bobby Lashley is looking to allow Melo to make his name off the almighty behalf. Bell has sounded and we are underway here in the All-State Arena in Chicago. Thank you for joining us yet again tonight. Should be an incredible night of action featuring the WWE Championship on the line. The steel cage match between Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle as well. Kicking things off with Carmelo Hayes and Bobby Lashley. We've hosted so many great events here in the All-State Arena in Chicago, Illinois. Yet another one tonight with this stacked Monday Night Raw live premiere occasion. Carmelo Hayes hot out of the gate all over the almighty Bobby Lashley. And that is really what aided him to even get the opportunity to get his feet on the ropes a couple of weeks ago was just keeping his foot on the gas pedal throughout the entire matchup. But Bobby Lashley did not come to play games tonight. Let's, let's leave it at that, to say the least. Lashley, of course, is coming off a loss last month at SummerSlam in the main event for the WWE Championship. His return bout was against Carmelo Hayes. We all saw how that went. Lashley's got to be fired up tonight. Hungry to see his hand raised high here in Chicago. Off the scoop of the slam. And I think Lashley knows that Melo, a lot of talent, a lot of endurance, wasn't going to put him away right there, but certainly he can get in the mindset of Mr. Melo don't miss. And obviously the X Factors at ringside, Trick Williams and MVP. And MVP definitely going to aid Carmelo Hayes in this matchup tonight. Knowing what Bobby Lashley is like, all fired up and focused as MVP at one time was standing alongside the Almighty. It was only last, or she should say earlier this year to the Elimination Chamber event when Bobby Lashley kicked MVP to the curb, but all these months later, MVP now by the side of Carmelo Hayes and Bobby Lashley are gonna outlast the numbers tonight here in Chicago. Melo rolling to the outside, trying to create some distance as the Almighty is fired up here in your opening match tonight at Unforgiven. Oh, wait a minute, Lashley taking things. Wait a minute, nope. Almost looked like Lashley was going to take things to the air. Not something that Lashley normally does, but when he got cold feet that time, realizing Carmelo's bell wasn't, wasn't completely wrong. Lashley playing the smart game. You got to give him credit. Oh, wait a minute. Here's Lashley over the top rope, and that's exactly why Bobby Lashley hesitated the first time. Wasn't sure about Carmelo Hayes' whereabouts. And if Carmelo Hayes was just lying awake, waiting for Lashley to make a mistake. And that time it seemed to be. Lashley crashing and burning at ringside, and now Melo gonna pick the bones. This could be a career-making performance for Carmelo Hayes tonight. It's one thing to get the victory on Raw a few weeks ago. But if he can do it once again tonight, live and unforgiven, Carmelo Hayes may be undeniable. Big time DDT on the hardest part of the ring. And Hayes, you got to give him credit. Not backing down to Bobby Lashley, even though this fight has been taken to ringside. Got to give Melo his, his due. There's a reason MVP recruited him to come up from NXT and come to Monday Night Raw. Decorated champion down the black and gold brand. He's certainly going to be a champion, like him or not, one day on Monday Night Raw. Referee's at a count of seven right now. Melo and Lashley better get back in the ring. Melo realizing... And Carmelo could be on the verge of a count out victory here. Count of eight. Lashley hustling towards the ring, and he gets it at the count of nine to save himself in this opening bout. Melo was looking, oh, wait a minute. Melo looking for the victory by hook or by crook, and even if that means MVP interfering. No love lost between Montel Vontavious Porter and the almighty Bobby Lashley, as we documented already here tonight. Melo hit taking advantage of Bobby Lashley's back being turned. Now Carmelo trying to come from behind, but the Almighty's got a lot in the tank. Now Lashley look, going for a gut wrench possibly here, but instead goes back with it in a big time fall away slam. Gut wrench style, very innovated by the Almighty Bobby Lashley. Now we talked about the matchup with Melo a few weeks ago on Raw. The last time Lashley competed before that was last month at SummerSlam. But the last time Lashley scored a victory was on the last Monday Night Raw prior to SummerSlam in an epic main event collision against John Cena. Bobby Lashley hungry for victory tonight. And off the press slam, could see that three count. Not just yet as Melo gets the shoulder up. Great contest to kick things off so far. Wait a minute, again. 
And I don't want to see this become a reoccurring theme of the matchup. MVP trying to get involved. But it may just be just that as Melo once again comes from behind taking advantage. Carmelo Hayes is out to make his name tonight off Bobby Lashley's behalf. Take the next step on the Monday Night Raw roster. Possibly put himself in line for championship opportunities. A lot could come with another victory over the almighty. Lashley knows that. And Lashley wants those same opportunities. But if this keeps up, Melo may be leaving Chicago going two for two against the almighty. Going for the cover here. That may be all she wrote. And not just yet. Bobby Lashley still with fuel left in the tank. Obviously the tiredness starting to set in. There's some of the athleticism out of Melo. Carmelo doesn't say Melo don't miss for a reason. You saw him land the target right there. Springboard, clothesline, Lashley off his feet. Now on the run to the outside, trying to catch a breather in here, but Melo not gonna allow it. Lashley is in dangerous territory right now. It only takes the referee's back being turned for a second for MVP or Trick Williams to try to get involved. Lashley back inside the ring and now Melo, very brave of this young superstar to go to the ground right there with Lashley who had very ma many times can be a brawler between the ropes. Melo Hayes has flipped the switch in this matchup ever since the last time MVP got involved which was about two minutes ago, I'd say. Melo's been all over the almighty. They spoke too soon there. Wait a minute. Counter by Lashley. Going for a possible dominator. No, Melo gets out of it. Lashley was looking for the dominator there. Nobody home. And Melo hits the neck breaker. Simple yet effective maneuver. Oh, wait a minute. Referee's back is turned. Referee's having a word with MVP and Trick Williams. And unintentionally, this is close to Melo the match. Oh, and only a two count there. MVP and Trick Williams' antics may have costed Melo as the referee was reprimanded him. But there's the double knees that Melo used to defeat Lashley two weeks ago. And he's not done just yet. Face first goes the almighty. Melo, don't miss. Oh, man, Lashley getting the shoulder up at 2.9. It is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you kick off this Monday Night Roll exclusive live premiere event. All State Arena in Chicago is rocking, and the Almighty is starting to get fired up. Melo throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this former decorated champion, this future Hall of Famer, and Bobby Lashley. But Lashley is not done yet. Obviously, a little bit slow paced right now after everything Melo inflicted on the Almighty. Lashley still laser focused on the objective at hand. Mello may be the one dazed and confused, and Lashley with a big time slam down to the canvas. Mello's going to need to see a chiropractor on Monday morning. Big time shoulder block, and now Lashley's just starting to play catch up right now. Mello inflicted a lot of punishment on the Almighty for a couple of minutes there. Lashley realizing he is behind in this match. Once again, the power on display. Nobody does it better than the almighty Bobby Lashley, but, oh man, again, this time it's Trick Williams. Referee's back is turned as he's focused on Mello, possibly about to count him out here. Bobby Lashley cannot allow Trick Williams and MVP to dictate the pace of this match, which is what is happening right now. Could have easily been on the offense against Carmelo Hayes, and it happens again. Lashley goes to the sky, and he might have hit that a few seconds ago if it weren't for the distraction by Trick Williams. The numbers game is not in Bobby Lashley's favor tonight. And it is certainly benefiting his opponent. Melo don't miss, and now on the outside. Not gonna go well for Bobby Lashley. That is two costly missteps by Lashley in this match. And that's not counting the other times that his back was turned and Melo took advantage, but I think Bobby Lashley's starting to come a little unhinged, just sending Melo right into the steel steps. Meanwhile, as we're talking about it, there's Trick Williams again. This is absolutely ridiculous. So we got to get Trick Williams and MVP away from ringside to have an even fight between Melo and Lashley, because I got a feeling the pace of this contest would have been a hell of a lot different thus far had they not been involved. Expect nothing less from... Those three on the right. 
Nonetheless, Bobby Lashley is down. Bobby Lashley may be out, and Carmelo Hayes is trying to pick the bones of the Almighty, but the Almighty's got too much left in the tank. Dominator! He was looking for it earlier, but this time it connects. And it's not enough. It's not enough. As Melo gets the shoulder off the canvas, but Bobby Lashley certainly changing the pace of this contest. Big time dominator by Lashley to take down Melo. Wasn't enough for the three count, but certainly going to inflict some punishment. And there's a spear from the middle rope. You want to talk about changing the trajectory. Melo's ribs got to be crying for mercy right now. And if they're not already, there's Lashley to inflict some added punishment. Another spear. Bobby Lashley picks up a much needed victory to kick things off here at Unforgiven. Well, the numbers game was almost a detriment to the almighty Bobby Lashley and a handful of mistakes almost came back to haunt him. But in the end, Lashley just wanted it more. He stayed the course, he stayed focused, and he pulled out his big time maneuvers to get the victory. Here is your winner, the almighty Bobby Lashley. That was a much needed victory for Bobby Lashley after two consecutive losses and certainly some shocking ones at that. What a way to kick things off tonight in the All-State Arena. Whether I don't want to do it or not, I guess we got to give some credit to Carmelo Hayes for giving the fight to Lashley, but in the end, only one man could leave Chicago the victor, and that is the almighty Bobby Lashley. Coming up next here at Unforgiven is a match that could end up anywhere in Chicago. It's the Falls Count Anywhere matchup as the street champ, Solo Sokoa, looks to put a final ending to this war with Tommaso Ciampa. It was months ago when Ciampa scored the win over Solo in a Money in the Bank qualifying match, a loss that sent Solo Sokoa over the edge. Ever since that night, it's as if the past continues to haunt Ciampa, not once, not twice, but on three occasions now, Solo has ambushed Champa when he least expected it, even sending the Blackhawk, falling from a ledge and crashing through a spotlight. A win over Champa wasn't enough. This unhinged Samoan bulldozer wants to end the career of Tommaso, but Champa may be more fired up than ever to stick it to Solo once and for all. No countouts, no disqualifications, and falls will count anywhere when Solo Sokoa squares off with Tommaso Ciampa up next in the Windy City. It is time for the Falls Count Anywhere match. This thing could end up in the streets of Chicago, Illinois. This is going to be a big one. It's going to be a fight to end this war. The is a Falls Count Making his way to the ring from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 250 pounds, Solo Sikoa. We are here tonight because of the actions of that man, that wild Samoan bulldozer, the street champ, Solo Sikoa. Tommaso Ciampa defeated him in the Money in the Bank qualifier back in June, as you just saw in the video package. Solo Sokoa could have easily eaten that loss and moved on, but it wasn't to be. Solo has held a grudge ever since, and he is the reason his actions, his ambushes, are the reason why we are on Unforgiven tonight with a Falls Count Anywhere matchup. Solo Sokoa wants to put the final nail in the coffin of Tommaso Ciampa's career, but the Blackheart is seeking some absolute extreme retribution. This is going to be a Windy City brawl if I say so myself as Champa makes his way down the aisle. And his opponent from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, weighing in at 201 pounds, Tommaso Champa. Tommaso Champa, the last two times he has been inside the ring with Sol Sokoa, it has not gone his way. Just this past Monday Night on Raw, Ciampa teamed up with Cedric Alexander to take on Solo Sokoa and the Intercontinental Champion LA Knight, and Solo yet again pinning the shoulders of Ciampa. But tonight is where it matters. Tonight is the last lap. Tonight is the singles rubber match between the two, and there's absolutely no holds barred. Anything goes, falls count anywhere, falls count 
anywhere between Chip and Solo. Oh my goodness, the bell sounds and Champa right out the gate, as we pretty much expected. Fired up tonight, looking to unleash a warpath on Solo Sokoa. Tommaso Champa's been waiting for this matchup to get his hands on Solo from bell to bell with no restrictions for a long time now. Of course, these two men met in a rematch from that Money in the Bank qualifier on the Raw after SummerSlam. Champa obviously did not go into that fight 100%, and we saw how that went. Solo picking up the victory in that contest against Champa last month. Nonetheless, it's not about what you did before, it's about what you do tonight. Who's gonna get the last laugh, and who's gonna be the last man standing? Sol Sokoa bringing things to the outside. And look at this, got a bear hug in on Tommaso Ciampa. And this is all legal, well, I mean, of course it's all legal, but the ending could come on the outskirts of the ring. You see the referee asking Ciampa if he wants to give up. Falls count anywhere, also submissions count anywhere. As long as there's a decision, it doesn't matter where it happens. Champa trying to avoid that. You realize Sol Sokoa going with the bear hog, realizing that Tommaso Champa's rib cage has really not been 100% for over a month on Monday Night Raw. Ever since Champa fell off that ledge by hands of Solo and crashed through that spotlight, Champa's been wrestling at what, 50, 60, maybe 70%? All remains to be seen. Champa's got enough in the tank tonight to take down the street champer if this is going to be a walk in the park for Solo Sokoa here in Chicago. Two former NXT champions in their own right for Solo Sokoa, former NXT North American champion. Champa holding the NXT title, tag team titles as well. And last year, Tommaso Champa has been the Intercontinental Champion, one half of the world tag team champions. Solo Sokoa making his Raw debut. Just a few weeks after WrestleMania earlier this year, and man, oh man, has he made an impact ever since. And Champa avoided that headbutt there. Gets him back into this contest momentarily. Referee is pretty much helpless to stop any brutality in this match. He's only, only there to ask for a, a give up, a tap out, or score the three. Solo making his way back into the ring, and Champa going for the axe hammer. Not to be. The street champ comes from behind. Sending Champa to the outside and sending Champa really to the outside that time. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. Solo Sokoa is heading to the top yet again here. Solo not, oh well, second guessing himself. Probably a smart decision. Not looking to go to the well for the second time with the same maneuver. Realizing Champa might have it scouted, but Solo's got other plans here. Breaking out the table in Chicago. Anything goes, falls can anywhere, and the tables are certainly legal tonight. Solo, just a few weeks back, put Tommaso Ciampa through one of those very tables, and I'm sure Ciampa's had some nightmares and daydreams about it. Sending Solo to the outside, Tommaso trying to avoid disaster as that table was brought inside the squared circle. Just ragged on the street, Ciampa falls over the knee. Big time comeback there by the black heart of Monday Night Raw. Ciampa looking to take this fight to the outside. The table's been brought inside the ring. Now Champa's looking underneath. He's got a stop sign. Probably grabbed that off the streets of Chicago earlier today. But Solo avoids it in a mean suplex on the outskirts. And into the cover. Falls count anywhere. Looking for the victory. Not just yet. Absolute anarchy since the bell has rung. Inside the ring. Outside the ring. Now Solo with Champa in the fireman's carry position. So his eyes on the barricade and right to the rib cage. Solo looking to inflict that already done punishment on Tommaso Ciampa tonight. Maybe an easy coast to victory for Solo Sokoa. And again going for the headbutt. That time Ciampa had it scouted there. Lucky for Tommaso with Solo making another mistake. It's one of the things that Ciampa's certainly got over the street champ Solo Sokoa is the veteran status. Solo still very early in his career, a little bit naive at times. We've seen him make mistakes in the past and come up short because of it. Tommaso Ciampa looking to take advantage of those mistakes, if there is any. Solo into the cover at ringside, and Ciampa gets the shoulder up again. Oh, man, another discus lariat, knocking Solo off his feet. And Ciampa just using his own body as a weapon right now. Throwing caution in the wind. Oh, man, and jumping Solo Sokoa with an E. Now Champa's looking for the cover. Referee a little out of position there. Hustles up to try to make the three, but it's only a one. 
Ciampa again. Tommaso is looking to make a statement tonight. It's not just about the victory. It's about payback over Sol Sokoa, who laid him out with a kendo stick, laid him out putting him through a table, sent him off the ledge through the spotlight. Ciampa wants his payback, and he wants it tonight. Using the stop sign off the hard dome of that Samoan bulldozer. Oh, man. Right to the back, and wait a minute, Sol Sokoa just absorbing it there. Solo has got a mean streak. And Tommaso Ciampa, obviously, has already found that out firsthand before, but he's certainly being reminded of it tonight. I think it's fair to say Solo has controlled the majority of this matchup thus far. Tommaso Ciampa needs to start playing catch-up. These guys are just using their surroundings to beat the hell out of each other. We saw the stop sign. That table, don't forget, still inside the squared circle that Solo introduced. Oh man, dropping the knee. That is not going to be good for Tommaso Ciampa. Solo takes out those arms of Ciampa, eliminating the fairy tale ending or eliminating Project Ciampa out of Tommaso's arsenal. Tommaso trying to create some distance right now, possibly catch a breath as he goes underneath the ring yet again. And he's got a kendo stick. And there you go, right to the shoulder blade of the street champ at one of the rib cage. Payback is best served by a cold-hearted son of a bitch named Tommaso Ciampa. Unloading on Solo Sokoa right now. Wins that one, but he gets the second. Oh, and Solo finally creating some distance and getting that kendo stick out of the hands of the Blackheart. Back inside the squared circle we go as the brawl was taken around ringside the last number of minutes. A big time Samoan drop. You notice how quick Solo gets back into the matchup. Absolutely, he's just able to absorb that punishment. That's the mean streak. That's the Samoan in this street champ that we discuss. Solo comes from a long line of fighters. Certainly doing him proud, if you will. Champ into the corner and a big time knee right to the jaw. It's enough to knock anybody out. Maybe not Solo Sokoa, tough as they come. Also, Champ is trying to inflict that punishment. And now into the cover. But it knocked Solo a little loopy off that knee, but not just yet. The fight continues here at the All-State Arena. Tommaso Ciampa very familiar with the Windy City. He's had plenty of Windy City classics in the past as he comes off the top rope and delivers a knee to Solo. Referee, get your ass to the outside. Oh, man. Ciampa might have got screwed over there by the referees out of position. Nonetheless, back inside the ring we go. Oh, and Tommaso has got his hands on that Singapore cane. You see it's already bent up from the body of Sol Sokoa. Solo realizes that, trying to avoid it. And that's certainly a way to make sure that Singapore cane doesn't come in contact with the bear skin again. Solo Sokoa avoiding disaster as Tommaso Ciampa was looking for his pound of flesh that time. Back and forth with these shots. Champion with another reversal. A couple of closed fists. Never done anybody any harm in this kind of street fight that we are witnessing tonight. Solo down. Tommaso Ciampa yet again has got his eyes on the kendo stick. Tommaso Ciampa's fired up. Wants to use that Singapore cane to once again inflict that ultimate payback. Tommaso is just unloading on Solo right now. And one more breaks it over the cranium of the street champ into the cover. Oh, and I thought Ciampa had him there. I thought he might have caught him and knocked him out with the Singapore cane, exploding in the middle of the squared circle, but Solo Sokoa survives. Somehow, Solo Sokoa getting the shoulder off the canvas. Tommaso Ciampa realizing he's got to inflict some more punishment to keep this tough SOB down as they head to the top rope here. And this isn't going to be good for anybody. Oh, wait a minute. Might have been a mistake on behalf of the black part. The black heart is that is a tough fall by Solo Sokoa to Ciampa. Solo better keep his eye on the ball, though, as Ciampa is back to his feet and is throwing swings, throwing lefts, throwing rights. Looking for a home run here in the Windy City. This thing is turning out into a brawl. Solo going for a Samoan spike as Ciampa counters at a big time discus knee. 
Solo Sokoa was going for the kill, but Tommaso Chip has been on the receiving end on too many occasions. Not gonna allow tonight, and Chip has now set his sights on the table that Solo Sokoa introduced earlier on. Could be poetry in motion if Champa can put that table to use, but Solo not gonna allow it. I'll get the two there. Close call. Close call by Champa. Now Solo going for the headbutt. This time inflicts it. It's crazy how much damage, not just in this match, but in all of his matches, just on Monday Night Raw, Monday Night Raw alone thus far, that we have seen Solo Sokoa withstand and still come back on the other end. Speaks volumes to the toughness of the Samoan Bulldozer, I'll give you that. Solo up against the ropes here. What has Champa got in mind? That table's right there. Oh, oh, man! Face first, Solo Sokoa might have broken his nose off the table. But Champa's not done, bringing the string champ to his feet, and he's got his eyes on the wood. Tommaso Champa with payback in mind. Power bomb through the table. Tommaso Chip into the cover. And that's gonna be a win for the Black Heart tonight at Unforgiven. Well, these two men fought from pillar to post. A fight that broke down into an absolute street fight in the midst of this Falls Count Anywhere match, but only one man was meant to survive, and that man was the Black Heart. Here is your winner, Tommaso. Well, Solo Sokoa started a war that he wasn't able to finish here tonight. Tommaso Ciampa had to withstand it all, but in the end comes out with his hand raised high. A big win for Tommaso Ciampa here at Unforgiven. What is going to be next for that man on Monday Night Raw? Over the last five weeks, we have witnessed the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament play out, and it continues next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time as the quarterfinals move to Dominic Mysterio versus Johnny Gargano. And also coming your way next Saturday in Manhattan, New York, Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate, takes on the human highlight reel, Ricochet, who was just successful last night against the Nigerian giant Omas at no mercy. The CWC 2023 continues next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time live. But it is time to continue with the unforgiven event here in Chicago, Illinois, as the Intercontinental Championship is on the line. The following contest is a triple WWE Intercontinental Championship! Introducing the challenger from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 200 pounds, Cedric Alexander! Well, this is Cedric Alexander's second opportunity at the Intercontinental Gold. Came up just a little bit short at SummerSlam. It was an incredible performance by Cedric, but in the end, a BFT and a 1-2-3 by LA Knight secured him the victory and retained his Intercontinental Championship. With an X-Factor and Sami Zayn in this matchup, what will be the result with two challengers and one champion in the midst of this triple threat? One fall to a finish contest here tonight in Chicago. And introducing the challenger. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada, weighing in at 212 pounds, Sami Zayn! Well, Sami Zayn earned his way into an Intercontinental Championship match with a victory over Cedric Alexander just days before last month's SummerSlam. These two men went one-on-one -on -one a few weeks ago on Raw. Alexander picked up the win on that night with both men securing victories over each other and both of them eyeing an opportunity at the Intercontinental Championship triple threat was made. Let's see who's going to be the better man tonight. Of course, LA Knight has held the gold since July at Money in the Bank. Two successful title reigns already. Will he make it a third or will Sami Zayn, the great liberator, or Cedric Alexander enter the age of Alexander? Three possible ways this matchup can go. Who is going to leave Unforgiven with the inner Continental Championship? And introducing the champion from Hagerstown, Maryland, weighing in at 230 pounds, 
He is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, LA Knight. Two victories over the invincible Ilya Dragunov. One to win the title and one to retain the title. And as we previously mentioned, LA Knight bringing home the gold yet again last month in Levi Stadium at SummerSlam. Obviously, LA Knight not happy about having two challengers in a matchup where he could possibly not even be pinned to lose the Intercontinental title. But such is life, and LA Knight is going to have to put up a fight to retain his championship here tonight in Chicago. Three great talents nonetheless, and whether I like Sami Zayn's attitude a lot of the times is another story, but certainly a deserving challenger for the defiant Intercontinental Champion. First championship of several on the line here tonight at Unforgiven. Triple threat matchup, one fall to a finish for that prestigious Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship of the World. Two challengers in Cedric Alexander and Sami Zayn and the defending champion in LA Knight, who's taken home the gold as Unforgiven rolls on. Bell has sounded, we are underway. It'll be very interesting to see who's going to get the upper hand in the early moments of this matchup. Alexander obviously going to be a little fired up. Not only losing to LA Knight last month at SummerSlam, but as we mentioned previously, this past month on a roll with Solo Sokoa and LA Knight defeating Cedric Alexander and Tommaso Ciampa in that tag team matchup. See how that loss is going to play into the momentum of Cedric Alexander. All remains to be seen here. LA Knight obviously with the most recent winning streak of all three of these men. Hasn't lost a match in a few months here on Monday Night Raw. A Sami Zayn big time sit out power bomb to Alexander. And normally in a singles contest, you would expect the superstar to go for a pinfall, even if it wasn't going to get the job done that early. With the third X Factor in this matchup, any way you spin it, you really aren't going to get that pinfall until you eliminate both competitors. This is what makes triple threat matches such a difficult task to come. Alexander. As you saw right there, going for the pinfall, but the Intercontinental Champion on his feet and not going to allow that one. We get Monday Night Raw's best battling it out for the title, and LA Knight sends an Alexander for a ride. Usually Alexander's going to the outside by will, but that time it was by force. That was a hard fall by the Intercontinental Champion, nonetheless, as LA Knight and Sami Zayn are going at it. Cedric Alexander's back inside the ring, and you notice taking his time. Not trying to run up on the action until he sees necessary. A big time neck breaker on LA Knight. But Sami Zayn looking to take advantage of the back being turned. Sami Zayn could pin Cedric Alexander. Alexander could pin Zayn. The Intercontinental title could change hands without LA Knight, who just introduced a steel chair, not even being in the equation of this match. Anything goes in a triple threat matchup, so that steel chair that LA Knight probably planned on using. Oh, well, there he goes again. Obviously, had to break up that submission hold, but LA Knight, Sami Zayn avoids the chair and a big time pop up drop kick. Absolutely, anything could happen in the confines of this triple threat match. All we need is a pinfall or a submission to secure an Intercontinental Champion on the way out of All State Arena tonight. LA Knight going for another chair shot, but Alexander avoids it. LA Knight's looking to use that X Factor of this being no disqualifications to his advantage tonight. Maybe to try to outweigh the fact that he's got two challengers. But Sami Zayn with the same plan in mind. A steel chair to the back of Alexander and LA Knight now. Trying to gang up on Alexander. LA Knight and Sami Zayn, at least for a moment there, working on the same side. Strange alliances will be made in multi-man matches like this. We've seen it a million times before. And we also seen a million times before those Strange alliance does not really play out as LA Knight and Sami Zayn go back to the well on each other. Not the bad, not the worst strategy, I should say, though. You eliminate one superstar from this match, you can at least bring it to a triple threat. I should say a one on one. Meanwhile, LA Knight has got another chair inside the ring. I don't know why he needs a third. It's as if every man's got a chair if they want to use it at the moment. Taking advantage of the no disqualification rules to absolute full exploration. And there's the chair to Cedric Alexander. And now LA Knight looking to get the win. Sami Zayn out of the equation momentarily, but Alexander gets the shoulder up. See Sami Zayn in there trying to break up the pinfall and trying to sneak a victory over Alexander, but LA Knight, of course, not going to allow that one. Because once again, he's trying to swing that steel chair. Sami Zayn avoids it. A lot to call here as Zayn now goes behind LA Knight. 
with the counter. A lot of action to keep up with in this triple threat matchup as it's been all weekend. First no mercy last night in Baltimore from SmackDown. Now, Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven here in Chicago. And of course, we will be back tomorrow night as always. Monday Night Raw live from Green Bay, Wisconsin. On the road to next month's live premiere event, Clash at the Castle, Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. That was announced last night at No Mercy. Alexander, nice take down there. And a nice drop kick to LA Knight. Alexander's been on the up and up all year long on Monday Night Raw. Really worked hard for that Intercontinental Championship opportunity. Defeated Carmelo Hayes in a number one contest match. Number one contenders match, excuse me. That is what punched his ticket to SummerSlam originally. Unfortunately, unable to capitalize by keeping his name in the conversation. Has another chance at glory tonight. Will he take advantage? Will Sami Zayn or possibly LA Knight spoil that party for Alexander? Rushing leg sweep, and you notice the steel chair there on the landing, unintentional or not. Not going to help the landing for Alexander as LA Knight now turns his attention to Sami Zayn. Trying to go back and forth, may do you some dividends, but every single time you're leaving an opponent wide open to sneak up on you, as Alexander just did to the Intercontinental Champion. Off the middle rope. Nice move by Alexander. Cedric's got to take advantage of this opportunity tonight. Championship matches don't come around every day. And now back-to-back -back months getting a shot at the Intercontinental Gold. It's really win or go to the back of the line for Alexander tonight at Unforgiven. It might not be a bad idea. Unintentional right there, but Alexander laid out LA Knight. Sami Zayn did the same. As we talked about earlier, it might not be a, the worst idea in the world to form a strange alliance, at least just to cut things down to a one-on-one -on -one match, if possible. All remains to be seen. Meanwhile, LA Knight has introduced a fourth steel chair to this matchup, and it does not pay Cedric Alexander any dividends. Eliminates him from being a factor of winning this match, at least for the moment. Sami Zayn now with LA Knight in an opportune state. He's got his eyes in the chair, which LA Knight avoids. Oh, wait a minute. LA Knight with Zayn up. And Zayn down, stacking him up inside the squared circle. And Alexander back inside the ring. And LA Knight starting to roll here as the Intercontinental Champion. All in the hopes of retaining his title. Now in the fireman's carry position as LA Knight is really starting to get moving here in this triple threat matchup. He's got the challengers wary. Of course, as this matchup continues to progress, the endurance starts to play a factor. Having three superstars in the ring at one time isn't going to help your cause of winning the match, especially in deep championship rounds. Oh, and I almost had Alexander there to no avail. Sami Zayn breaking the back of the Intercontinental Champion. Hard shot there. Oh, wait a minute, LA Knight. Oh wait, Alexander's out of the equation. LA Knight with the burning hammer on the steel chair to Sami Zayn, and that may do it. Not just yet as Sami Zayn, a very unenthusiastic kick out, but got the shoulder up nonetheless. Oh, and Alexander dropping an elbow on Zayn just for good measures. And LA Knight with a chair. These two men beating up Sami Zayn, possibly trying to eliminate him from this matchup, but Alexander coming from behind. Wait a minute, BFT on Cedric Alexander. Sami Zayn going for the Blue Thunder. LA Knight reverses. Down goes Sami Zayn. Zayn rolling to the outside. Cedric Alexander laid out with the BFT and a chair shot for good measures. Knight into the cover. And is that gonna do it? LA Knight, when there's a will, there's a way. And the defiant LA Knight finds a way to retain his Intercontinental Championship. Well, LA Knight, the first to use the rules to his advantage, introducing those steel chairs and the BFT to Alexander. With a little salt in the wounds with that chair shot, enough to get the three count and retain his coveted gold. Here is your winner, and still WWE Intercontinental Champion, well, you got a feel for Cedric Alexander. You don't know when the next time his championship opportunity is going to come around. Back-to-back -back losses for the young man. But nonetheless, LA Knight makes a great case yet again tonight to be one of the prominent faces on Monday Night Raw. Another Intercontinental Championship defense in the books, and the gold is leaving with LA Knight.
the next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. We are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. Well, already the Intercontinental Championship successfully defended by the defiant LA Knight, but will the Judgment Day have that same luck as the World Tag Team titles of the WWE are on the line? And here come two deserving challengers. The Bruiserweight Butch, Ridge the Fridge Holland. The Brawling Brutes are in Chicago. There is a lot of history throughout these last couple of months between the Brawling Brutes and the Judgment Day. Really unfinished business that has led them to a World Tag Team Total Collision tonight. Remember when the Brawling Brutes originally formed was around the time Sheamus and Seth Rollins situation kicked off back in the spring which eventually led to a Judgment Day alongside Rollins versus the Brawling Brutes in a six-man tag back at Vengeance in May which the Brawling Brutes were successful in. A few weeks later the Judgment Day defeated the Brawling Brutes to become the number one contenders for the tag team titles which of course they took the fullest advantage of back at King of the Ring in June. So now tonight a little bit of a score to settle if you will. History between these duos but tonight is for all the marbles with the most prestigious world tag team titles of the WWE on the line. And of course, a little extra hardware in the Judgment Day locker room as just 24 hours ago, Monday Night Raw's nightmare, Rhea Ripley, shocking us all, showing up at the SmackDown exclusive No Mercy, cashing in her money in the bank on Shayna Baszler and leaving Baltimore with the WWE Women's Championship. An absolute shocker, just 24 hours ago at No Mercy, Rhea Ripley somewhere all, night, all day long hiding out in the shadows of the CFG Bank Arena and decided to cash in on a weekend Queen of Spades. And obviously it was not as easy as I'm sure the Eradicator would like to poke, but in the end the result remained that Rhea Ripley had the successful cash in she hoped for. And now the Judgment Day walked down the aisle here in the Allstate Arena dripped in gold. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, the WWE World Tag Team Champions. Rhea Ripley, the WWE Women's Champion. The Judgment Day are truly taking over Monday Night Raw. And that has been their MO for months ever since aligning with each other. Back in the spring, these three have had a mission. And if you look at the results around their waist, clearly that mission is going to plan. But will it be a short-lived ride in the sun for the Judgment Day as Balor and Priest put the gold on the line against the Brawling Brutes here tonight in Chicago? Let's send things down to the ring for your official pre-match introduction. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 458 pounds, Ridge Holland and Butch, the Brawling Brutes. And their opponents at a combined weight of 439 pounds. They are the World Tag Team Champions, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, The Judgment Day. Well, here we go. The stage is set in the All-State Arena here in Chicago, Illinois. Unforgiven continues with a collision for the World Tag Team titles. I am looking forward to this one. You remember last month at SummerSlam, Priest and Balor possibly having the tag team match of the year with Gallows and Anderson from SmackDown, the OC. The Brawling Brutes ready to give the Judgment Day the best run for their money they possibly can here tonight. As the bell has sounded, and we are underway with our second of three championships to be decided. Finn Balor and Ridge the Fridge Holland to kick things off. Unfortunately, 
Last, honestly, for both sides, I guess you can almost call it a, a fortunate belief, if you will. Last time we saw Butch in action was two weeks ago on Raw, losing to the WWE Champion Seth Rollins. This past Monday night in Philadelphia, Damian Priest taking a loss to the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. So as I was about to mention, unfortunate losses, but it kind of evens out the momentum in a sake. So we'll see who's going to have the greater advantage in this matchup as it progresses, but a great maneuver by Ridge Holland. Ridge the fridge, they call him. That's because of the powerhouse, former rugby player. Sheamus has taken Ridge Holland under his wing as his protege ever since the spring on Monday Night Raw. NXT stand out, and Ridge has certainly come into his own the last few months in the midst of the duo and the trio of the Brawling Brutes. And Ridge Holland bring home his first championship gold tonight. That is the question. His tag team partner, who he just tagged in, the Bruiserweight Butch, certainly familiar with holding some gold here in the WWE. Former NXT United Kingdom champion, Earlier this year, was in the midst of his second run with the Intercontinental title. Butch looking to win the tag team titles alongside Ridge tonight. Let's see if he can get the job done. Damian Priest down, at least for the moment. And as we mentioned, Priest one-on-one -on -one and was an awesome matchup. Very physical in the main event of Raw this past week in Philadelphia. Damian Priest quite possibly may not be fully healed up from that collision with Sheamus. All remains to be seen if that's going to play an X factor in this tag team title match. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us as we approach the second hour of Unforgiven in a few moments. It's been an awesome night. It's been an awesome weekend. Cruiserweight Classic yesterday afternoon, followed up by SmackDown's No Mercy. Now here tonight for Raw's Unforgiven. And of course, Monday Night Raw tomorrow in Green Bay, Wisconsin, as we kick off the road to clash at the castle at the end of October in Cardiff, Wales. Nobody brings you the action quite like the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. It's the only place that's going to do it. We ain't slowing down anytime soon. You want weekly consistent action? Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like and leave your support. It's Finn Balor tagged in, bringing the fight to the Bruiserweight Butch. Even in a singles capacity, Balor and Butch, no strangers to each other. It was around this time last year where they were duking it out for the Intercontinental title. And now 12 months later, back at it for the World Tag Team titles. Finn Balor looking to pick apart the Bruiserweight here tonight. That might be the best case scenario for the Judgment Day. Brawling Brutes have had an impressive run as a team and really haven't been teaming up for so long. About the same time as the Judgment Day. Might be a good idea to cut, try to cut the ring in half, but unfortunately Finn Balor more interested in showboating to the Chicago audience. And Rich Holland, unfortunately, not able to take advantage as he gets tagged in. He may have spoken too soon. There's the strength of Ridge. Ragdoll and Balor's neck down where he wants him. Just an Tomahawk chop right to the chest. There's a hammer right to the heart of Finn Balor. And a big time scoop and a slam by Ridge the Fridge. So far in their tag team title reign, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, of course, won the gold back in June at King of the Ring, defeating Mustafa Ali and Ricochet. They have retained the titles over the Street Profits at WWE Live in July. They retained against the OC last month at SummerSlam. Of course, other tag team victories along the way, but when the titles are on the line, can they get the job done for the fourth time in a row tonight? That remains to be seen. This thing's starting to break down. Balor focusing on Butch, Ridge focusing on Priest. And look at this. Look at the strength by Ridge the Fridge. Only so many men are going to be able to power up the Archer of Infamy. Ridge, certainly one of them. But Balor takes advantage of the back being turned. A little bit of anarchy there may have paid the Judgment Day dividends as Ridge Holland now fighting from underneath. Which is not something that Ridge is really used to with somebody of his size and strength. But Balor going to cut him down this size with a big time missile drop kick in the corner. Vintage Prince right there and Butch breaking things up to save their chances at the tag team titles. Of course still to come tonight. The leader of the Brawling Brutes, the Celtic Warrior Shame, is set to go one-on-one -on -one with the WWE Champion Seth Rollins. It could be a crowning night for the Brawling Brutes if they can walk away with all the gold. Remains to be seen as Finn Balor takes things to the sky, up and over the top rope, and down to the floor of the All-State Arena. It's only a thin padding between the floor and the floor of the All-State Arena of the concrete, and Ridge Holland felt it firsthand. Once again, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of anarchy never did anybody any harm. At least from an entertainment perspective. Can't speak for the fighters. Rich Holland 
Trying to mount some offense, get Finn Balor back inside the squared circle. Balor and Priest could easily retain their tag team titles via countout or even a disqualification tonight. But Ridge and Bush need a deciding factor, a pinfall or submission to win the tag team gold. Ridge is trying to get back into this, but Balor not going to allow it. And Ridge is really taking some big time offense these last couple of minutes by hands of the Prince. He's trying to take out the arm. To take out the arm might take away some of the strength of Ridge Holland. Very smart. Veteran status of Finn checking in there. You yeah, notice Balor at least was trying to slow the pace down, but Ridge Holland's got other plans here. Trying to take the crowd out of it, but Ridge. Beautiful swing out maneuver and into the pinfall. New champs on the way, only a one. Only a one count there, but that near fall can definitely get in the psyche of Balor to not take Ridge and Butch too lightly tonight. This is a team that has gone toe to toe with the Judgment Day in the past. Remember that six man tag that we mentioned back in May at Vengeance? It was the Brawling Brutes who picked up the victory on that night. And Ridge may be earning the tag team titles. Not just yet as Damian Priest breaks up the fall. A close call there by the challengers looking to leave Chicago with some gold. You know, Ridge Holland scaling the ropes here, jumping the axe hammer. Which has got Priest on the outside, X Factors out of the equation. Ridge Holland down goes Balor again. We're going to have new tag team champions. No, Balor gets the shoulder up. And that might have been the Brawling Brutes' best opportunity thus far. Chicago, Illinois showing their appreciation for these two beautiful tag teams as Balor 19-16 to change the tides of this title match. There's Butch, too close to Brawling Brutes territory. Ridge is down though, and Balor is scaling the ropes, and I think we know what comes next. A coup de grace in the red cage. But the Butch, or I should say the X-Factor and Butch, Balor not keeping in mind the fact that there's a fresh partner at ringside, as they've controlled Ridge Holland for the last few minutes, had taken the eye off the ball of the Bruiserweight Butch. And that may just pay the Brawling Brutes dividends having that fresh competitor in the corner. And there's a tag. Butch back inside the squared circle here, looking to unload on the Prince Finn Balor. You know, it was in this very building, Chicago, Illinois, back in 2017, where Butch won the NXT United Kingdom Championship. Can he make history again tonight and win the World Tag Team titles alongside Ridge the Fridge Holland? On the ropes, Balor goes. Set German into the bridge. Only gets the two, but certainly an effective maneuver as we enter some deep waters in this tag team title match. Judgment Day, no strangers to go in the distance. Some of the best teams in WWE have pushed them to their limits over the last few months. They have survived some of the best, but can they survive Butch and Holland tonight? As Balor, wait a minute, taking things to the outside, unnecessarily, might I say. Wait a minute, eye for an eye as Butch takes out Priest. Butch saying, anything you can do, I can do better. You want to go off the ridge? Well, I'll take out Priest, and we can settle this man to man. Balor back inside the ring. The Bruiserweight awaiting him. Back and forth with the reversals here. Power and elbow, who's gonna get the upper hand? And a bit of a stalemate as Balor drops down. And an arm drag that Ricky Steamboat will be proud of. And trying to catch Butch off guard with the three count. Not enough just yet. And great tag team matchup, great effort by both teams. You might not like Balor, Priest, and even Rhea Ripley's attitudes and their actions from time to time, but you can't knock their efforts and certainly their results from bell to bell. And the ropes goes Butch, and there's a double team. Just one of the reasons why the Judgment Day have worked like such a well-oiled machine over the last number of months. Down goes the Bruiserweight, face first off the canvas, but the Archer of Infamy is not done just yet. Mean shot to the back and could be looking to send Butch south of heaven. And that's going to do it to retain the tag team titles. Not just yet as Ridge Holland scrapes his body into the ring. Enough fuel left in the tank to break up the pinfall. Somehow Butch getting to his feet. Certainly running off adrenaline and no more. Big time face buster by Priest moments ago. Followed by the south of heaven. Butch has got to be in agony right now, but... Willing himself on and trying to tap into those bruiserweight instincts. There's a reason they call Butch the bruiserweight. 
He'll pick apart your opponent limb by limb, flesh by flesh, bone by bone. And that's what we are seeing right now as he's starting to inflict some punishment on the Archer of Infamy. Pulls him in with the short arm Larry there. A lot of power behind it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rhea Ripley mouth it off. Wait a minute. Mouth it off the butch. Pri Priest is going to steal it. No. The Judgment Day almost stealing the tag team title victory tonight. Thanks to the new women's champion Rhea Ripley at ringside. Butch almost got caught with his hand in the cookie jar there. Luckily for Ridge Holland, able to break things up and the matchup progresses. Finn Balor tagged in yet again. There's a Inziguri by the Bruiserweight. A lot of back and forth in these last few minutes between the Judgment Day and the Brawling Brutes as Butch sends Balor for a ride into the cover. We can see in the back corner, Damian Priest is still moving. I don't think we're going to get a conclusive winner to this match until they take care of Priest and take care of Holland. Oh, man! DDT on the apron! Well, that's certainly one way to take out the illegal partner. Dropping him on his dome on the hardest part of the ring. Finn Balor back inside the ring with no partner to tag. Oh, and out to the outside. Now both the Judgment Day weary on the outskirts of the ring. And Finn Balor is dazed. Finn Balor is confused. And I don't know if Butch is even meant to send him to the outside or if Balor's own momentum took him out. But that was a smart move by Butch to just take the moment to rest and recuperate. And Balor with a shot. Wait a minute. Down goes Butch. And I think that's going to do it. Butch is taking a lot of offense. A lot of big time maneuvers from this duo. But Ridge is still moving. Man, what is it going to take? to leave Chicago, Illinois with the World Tag Team Gold. Very physical back and forth contest between the brawling brutes, the challengers, the Judgment Day, the champions. Meanwhile, Butch trying to muscle up the punishment of the Judgment Day. Oh, he goes into a submission hold. A sneaky arm bar by Butch. Oh, but he's not done. Maybe he's not going for the submission hold. Maybe he's going to snap the limbs of Damian Priest. Oh, God! My goodness! Damian Priest is gonna feel that one on Monday morning. And Butch, uh, wait a minute, I believe, I believe Rhea Ripley off camera was on the apron, mouthing off to the bruiserweight, and they have cost him there. Got the two count, but not the three. And once again, back and forth, the pendulum of momentum swings in your tag team title match. Tag made to Balor. Well, Butch trying to take out Damian Priest, but to no avail. Oh, and Balor dropping him with a dead level. A little brain bust to action here in Chicago. And there's a counter by Butch again. Back and forth. Oh, Damian Priest catching Butch with a knee. Butch getting out of the way. Wait a minute. Saito! And Damian Priest knocked on the, off, off the apron, excuse me, by hands of the Bruiserweight Butch. And they've now got a handicap match on the Prince at least for a moment. And they better take advantage. Strike while the iron's hot. Wait a minute. Bitter end. A bitter end to Finn Bauer. Butch into the cover. No Damian Priest to save the day. We got new WWE World Tag Team Champions. My goodness, what a matchup. And through everything the Judgment Day had, the offense of Priest, the punishment of Balor, the X Factor and the Eradicator at ringside, the Brawling Brutes survive and are leaving new Tag Team Champions. Here are your winners, and the new World Tag Team Champions, Butch and Ridge Holland. What a moment here at the Allstate Arena in Chicago. The Bruiserweight Butch, Ridge the Fridge Holland, the Brawling Brutes are your new WWE World Tag Team Champions. And is this a foreshadow to tonight's main event? Will the Celtic Warrior Sheamus be joining them with gold around his waist? Is this going to be a banner evening for the Brawling Brutes? Remains to be seen, but Butch and Ridge Holland are leaving with Tag Team Gold.
Coming up in moments here in Chicago, it's a rematch 203 days in the making as Becky Lynch gets her long-awaited fight against Asuka. It was back on WrestleMania Sunday in February when Becky Lynch met Asuka for the WWE Women's Championship. It was a tap out on the grandest stage that night that sent Becky Lynch into a downward spiral. It was a roller coaster of wins, losses, and mental anguish for Becky after her upsetting loss. This was all the while Asuka has continued to battle for the right to be the WWE Women's Champion. Becky finally started to get her head on straight, qualifying for the Money in the Bank, and even in defeat, found herself with a newfound confidence. The man sat back and waited for the opportunity to arise, and now she gets what she wanted since February 26th, and that's a rematch against Asuka. And there is an even greater motivation for Becky tonight. This is an opportunity to remind the world just who the hell she is. A chance to put herself back in contention for the women's title. Becky is trying to prove she is the better of these two women, but Asuka is coming off a summer of ups and downs. Losing her championship back in May and falling short in her match with Shayna Baszler last month at SummerSlam. Both of these women are in search of bragging rights and victory, but who will leave Chicago, Illinois holding their head up high? It's Asuka versus Becky Lynch, right here, right now. What has been an unforgettable night here at Unforgiven in the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois, but if the action is set to continue from the women's division, a long-awaited matchup, 203 days since their last meeting, it's the man Becky Lynch and the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Dublin, Ireland, Becky Lynch! Becky Lynch has been waiting all of those 203 days to run things back with Asuka to the point where it's not even about the women's championship like it was at WrestleMania. In the mind of Becky Lynch, it's about proving she is better than the Empress of Tomorrow. It's about proving she still has what it takes to be the man, to be the top dog in the women's division, and to possibly earn herself a chance to challenge for the championship now hold by Rhea Ripley. Certainly a big fight feel here tonight in Chicago between Becky Lynch and Asuka. I got a feeling this is going to be a good one. It was one of the best women's matches of the year back in WrestleMania. And title or not, these are two motivated women. Two big egos, if you will, in the division. And neither are looking to leave the Windy City with an L in the loss column. And something about that music just changes the mood when the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, enters the room. An eerie feeling comes upon the Windy City. And from Osaka, Japan, Asuka! You gotta believe Asuka is coming into this matchup hungrier than she's been in a long, long time. Losing the Women's Championship back in May at Vengeance. Off television, taking a few weeks away. Up until Money in the Bank in July, where she confronted Shayna Baszler. All roads led to SummerSlam last month, where Asuka meant Baszler for the gold and fell up short. Asuka's got to be coming into this matchup. Almost a similar mind of Becky to remind the world just what she is capable of and to prove that she is still the top dog in the women's division with or without a title around her waist. Sometimes the best matchups are the ones that are about simply winning and losing and what could come from it. And that is what the vibe is tonight, surrounding the Empress and the man. With a new women's champion at the helm of the division and the Eradicator, the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. Certainly every woman in that division has got their eyes set on challenging Rhea in the near future. Here we go, Unforgiven set to continue with Becky Lynch and Asuka for the first time in 203 days one-on-one. -on -one. Notice Becky Lynch wearing some similar attire that she did dating back to WrestleMania several years ago where she was the main event and she was a double champion. Becky wants to get back to those heights and it could start here tonight. Asuka's got other plans, however. Trying to beat down Becky Lynch. You know, Asuka's, you can almost 
title her almost a bruiser way in a sense of the women's division she does the same thing at times that butch does which is just pick apart her opponents piece by piece limb by limb and leave nothing left no meat on the bone until there's absolutely nothing left to to get from her opponent when i have a voice by the end of this weekend Becky back into the ring, and Asuka's meeting her with those roundhouse kicks that she has perfected over the years. Certainly a future Hall of Famer, no doubt about it, is the Empress. Same thing for Becky Lynch, but these two women not slowing down anytime soon. A lot left in the tank. And tonight could be the next step in marching towards a women's championship opportunity against the Nightmare. Becky trying to get her first offense of this matchup. Asuka trying to get the early mind game advantage, coming out swinging at the opening bell. You know, one count there. Becky's got to realize it's going to be a hell of a lot more to keep down Asuka tonight. Championships or not, Asuka will fight to the absolute bitter end. We've seen the Empress go to war with names like Shayna Baszler, Becky Lynch, Liv Morgan, Shotzi, Bianca Belair. Asuka's going to war with some of the best of them just in the last 12 months and change alone which has kicked off one of the best runs of Asuka's main roster career. The Empress taken to the outside, not by will, but by force of Becky Lynch. Becky may have fell into a trap, however, as she eats the announce table right to the rib cage. And that is not going to go well in the later rounds of this matchup when the wind gets knocked out of you and somebody like Asuka is looking to hunt you down. Asuka just brings that intimidation factor that not a lot of women do. She certainly has that in every single one of her matches over every single opponent. Look at that, catches Becky, just absolutely outsmarted her there on the apron, waited for Becky to get back in the ring, then struck her. Asuka's mind game is just on a different level. That is one thing you could say about the Empress of Tomorrow in comparison to not only Becky Lynch, but the rest of the women's division. Intimidation, as we mentioned, dominance as you've seen. And maneuvers like that, that you just can't avoid. This match has been majority Empress thus far, and Becky Lynch better reach deep down in the bag of tricks if she wants to win this rematch that she's waited 203 days for. Spinning leg lariat, not enough for the three count, but certainly will knock the wind out of you and propel Asuka one step closer, securing a victory tonight as the momentum of Becky takes her for a ride over the top. And Asuka's just going to lie in wait. You know the Empress would not mind a count-out victory tonight. Especially during those later months of Asuka's championship reign. You saw a little bit of that medieval come out in her. Any means necessary for victory when it comes to Asuka. Wait a minute, Becky Lynch dropped toe hold. STF locked in. She used this maneuver to tap out Tiffany Stratton in under a minute a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. But Asuka on a different level. The one of Monday Night Raw's newcomers and the former NXT champion and Tiffany Stratton. Becky Lynch trying to use that wherewithal to keep the momentum on the side of the man. Asuka rolling to the outside trying to catch a breather, but Becky got a meter there. Suicide dive to the outside and down to the floor of the All-State Arena. Sense of urgency in Becky Lynch out of Asuka's controlled majority of the early part of this match. Becky realizing she's got a Turn up the gear a little bit. Get the ball rolling against Asuka. Bringing the fight to the outside if absolutely necessary. I gotta say, it's been a great weekend for the women's division here in the WWE. Last night at No Mercy, Bianca Belair and Shotzi. Their bad blood between those two women coming to a head. And my goodness, what a fight it was. Shotzi picking up the victory in just the last few moments was able to sneak it out from under Becky, or excuse me, over Bianca Belair. Becky looking for the victory over Asuka. Of course, as we talked about already tonight, Shayna Baszler last night retaining the Women's Championship in a great match against Candice LeRae, but it was after the fact that really told the story. Monday Night Raw's Nightmare Rhea Ripley showing up on the SmackDown event to challenge Shayna Baszler and cash in her Money in the Bank contract, which was successful in the Nightmare of the Judgment Day. Bringing home the gold. Oh, man. Crashing a burn in the corner for Asuka. Was going for a hip attack, it looked like. And wait a minute, Becky Lynch going for a disarmor here. Trying to tap out the Empress, which I would say is a rare occurrence. But Asuka did tap to the Karafuda Clutch last month at SummerSlam. Oh, but Asuka's been there in that predicament before. And not going to allow tonight be the night where Becky scores the victory. Overhand shot to the back, and Asuka 
Trying to reverse it there. Like he's starting to mount some momentum. And Asuka is not going to allow it. The mean knee to the head. Sometimes Asuka keeps it real simple with those strikes. Just enough to beat down her opponent, knock them senseless, and secure a victory. Asuka coming out to the apron here, but I don't know what she's got in mind. Another shot on Becky Lynch. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at this by Asuka. Hang it up, Becky in the ropes. Obviously only for about four seconds or else she'd be disqualified. But the leverage with those ropes, locking in that arm bar, at least for a second. Now Asuka going to continue to work over that arm of Becky Lynch. Great move by Asuka. Like it or not, certainly smart, certainly effective. And just like that, the momentum stays on the side of the Empress of Tomorrow. Becky's got to be hurt after that. Fury of offense by Asuka, especially that arm bar and the ropes. Becky using said ropes just to try to scale to her feet. Obviously hurt as this matchup starts to reach some of the later rounds, but a big time suplex variation takes Asuka off her feet, at least for the moment. But Becky's got to keep the foot on the gas pedal, especially against somebody like the Empress of Tomorrow. No disrespect to the former NXT Women's Champion Tiffany Stratton, but... Becky beat her in under a minute a few weeks ago on Raw. Not going to be the same task as we are seeing against Asuka. Still got the two count there. Becky Lynch starting to at least rake up some damage on the Empress of Tomorrow, but she's got to keep it going. Oh, and Asuka, wait a minute. And the snap of the fingers gets Becky in a predicament and delivers a hip attack. Heard around Chicago. Oh, and she almost had her. Becky Lynch was almost down and out for good, but she gets the shoulder off the canvas. A close call by the Empress. Oh, wait a minute now. Signature kicks, and that may be a knockout blow. Becky Lynch may just meet her match yet again in Asuka. Asuka may just be the better woman of these two. Going for the missile drop kick, nobody home. A lucky sidestep by the man, who now goes behind and goes for a back suplex, and down goes Asuka. Especially off that fall, not going to go well. Wait a minute, Becky could be looking for another Tope Suicida. Very risky, going to the well for a second time, and there's why. Asuka had it scouted, and it's a crash and burn for the man at ringside. Asuka just read Becky's playbook miles away. Is all I could say. Now sending Becky into the barricade, and this is where Asuka just slips into that deranged sense. Just starts to beat up her opponent. Oh, man. Right into the ring post. Not going to go well for the Becky Lynch. That's for darn sure. Now Asuka, wait a minute, going for a senton. But this time it's her making the costly misstep. Becky Lynch out of the way. Crash and burn for the Empress of Tomorrow. Referee's at a count of six. These two women gonna get back inside the squared circle, nonetheless. Oh, wait a minute, Asuka eliminates Becky Lynch. Referee's at a count of seven here. Becky, Becky's gotta get up. Count of eight, she could be counted out here. How disappointing would that be? A count of nine. But Becky's in! Becky's in! Still with fight left in her, but oh no! She ran right into a trap! Asuka going for the Asuka lock of the man! And she's got it locked in! Becky had survived, but for how much longer? Oh, but Becky Lynch, this is what tapped her out at WrestleMania, but clearly she's done her homework on how to break it! Asuka releases the hold by the will of the man. And an arm drag takes down Asuka and slows down the pace, at least for a moment. What a great matchup between Asuka and Becky Lynch here tonight at Unforgiven in Chicago. Oh, Fisherman Suplex could have went for the cover there, but I don't know if Becky had enough to hold the bridge and get Asuka down for three. Becky's got to keep going as we are witnessing right here. Asuka's hurting. Becky may have a window of opportunity. Thought Asuka had her. She locked in that Asuka lock, which Becky tapped to at WrestleMania. But the man going to keep pressing forward as Asuka's on the top rope. And she may be in trouble as the man is on her tail. Oh, Becky could be going for a mega backsploder from the top. What a fall for the Empress of Tomorrow. Chicago's coming unglued and Becky's not done. Oh, could be looking for a manhandle 
slam. Down goes Asuka. Becky into the cover. And tonight, 203 days after WrestleMania, Becky Lynch secures her long-awaited victory. Well, what a physical, exciting match between these two top dogs in the women's division. But the man, Becky Lynch, proves her worth tonight at Unforgiven. Here is your winner, Becky Lynch. Well, we have a new women's champion in Rhea Ripley. She's going to need some challengers. And I think Becky Lynch just made a case to be a future number one contender for the WWE women's title. She waited almost all year for that rematch and finally ran it back with Asuka tonight. And the man, Becky Lynch, gets the results she wanted. A big time victory for Bex here in Chicago. Well, it's been one hell of a night already, but coming up in moments, the steel cage will be lowered and two legit fighters will be locked inside to settle the score once and for all. Back in May, Matt Riddle retained his previously owned WWE Championship against the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar, at Vengeance. During this time, both Riddle and Lesnar were dealing with a common issue against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And after two months on the shelf, Lesnar returned with a vendetta against those who crossed him. At SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar decimated Kevin Owens in a no-holds-barred match, but that was only the beginning. Championship or not, Lesnar feels a deep personal issue with Matt Riddle embarrassing him in the middle of Vancouver, Canada months ago. Brock targeted Riddle on the roll after SummerSlam and hasn't stopped since. The Beast won't be satisfied until he pins Riddle's shoulders for a three count. The former champion now finds himself fighting a battle he did not wish upon, but will relentlessly swing at the Beast in hopes of hitting a knockout punch. What will happen when these two men, who have been trying to tear each other apart for weeks, step inside a solid steel cage? We find out up next. The mood is about to change here in Chicago as the steel cage will be lowered and these two legit badasses will be locked inside to settle the score. The following is a steel cage match. Making his way to the ring from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 216 pounds, the original bro, Matt Riddle. It has been a banner year for the original bro, winning the Royal Rumble match, defeating Randy Orton not once but twice to win the WWE title, retain the gold over Karrion Cross, Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, John Cena, and even the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. That one victory for Riddle has led him to weeks upon weeks of brawls and ambushes with the Beast, and tonight, Riddle must face his demons Demons in the form of the most dangerous alpha male of our species known to man. Riddle is ready for action, but here comes the pain. The beast, the conqueror, the alpha male of our species, Brock Lesnar. his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 295 pounds, Brock Lesnar. To put in perspective the legend that is Brock Lesnar, 21 years ago at Unforgiven, September of 2002, Lesnar went one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker for the undisputed WWE Championship and walked out with his title. All these years later, a decorated career. Brock Lesnar does not give any dams. He defeated Omos at WrestleMania. He put the past behind him with Kevin Owens at SummerSlam and that no holds barred. But now Lesnar picks his own fight. He wants that win back. 
Almost how we talked about Becky Lynch and Asuka. Sometimes it's just about the wins and the losses and the bragging rights that come with them. Brock Lesnar wants to make an emphatic statement tonight inside of the steel cage. Prove that Riddle's win back in May was a fluke and prove that he is still the most feared athlete from bell to bell. And now up the ante, the steel cage that lowers, that surrounds the ring, that'll trap these two fighters. And here we go, the bell has sounded and we are underway. The reason for the steel cage tonight has been witnessed over the last couple of weeks on Raw. Brawls in the ring, at ringside, on the stage, off the stage. Riddle and Lesnar have been at each other's throats ever since Lesnar ambushed Riddle on the night after SummerSlam, and it has led to this. Four weeks later, the bro and the beast and a steel cage to be settled. And Brock Lesnar, off that early offense from Riddle, I'm sure is coming with an A plan, a B plan, a C plan, just to ensure he's ready for whatever different tactic Riddle might try to throw at him tonight. It's the first time since February that Riddle finds himself in a live premiere event without the WWE Championship. It's got to feel a little different for Riddle, but maybe a win over Lesnar tonight can put him back in the conversation for the WWE title. But Brock Lesnar is not looking to allow that. Ragdolling Riddle all over this ring. Not afraid to bring the stallion of Raw to suplex City. He's done it before and he will do it again. And I got a feeling this time in the most violent way with this solid steel cage surrounding him. And as this matchup progresses, we will focus on the action in a moment. We want to once again thank you for joining us all weekend long at the Cruiserweight Classic at No Mercy last night. Unforgiven tonight. We'll be back for Monday Night Raw tomorrow in Green Bay, Wisconsin as we kick off the road to Clash at the Castle next month. And Matt Riddle meets the steel cage, flesh on steel for the very first time. Brock Lesnar is going to use this cage as a weapon. It's one thing to be in the ring with Lesnar. That's already an intimidation factor. But now trap him with nowhere to go, putting an animal in a cage. This is something you see at a zoo. But Matt Riddle is going to keep fighting until the cows come home. And a big time springboard looking for the early victory. i will be trying to knock Lesnar out just long enough to get the three and escape what could be Riddle's toughest battle of his WWE career. We've seen a lot of them tonight. New champions crowned in the Brawling Brutes. LA Knight retaining his Intercontinental title. Becky Lynch moments ago getting that much awaited victory over the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, and still Sheamus and Seth Rollins for the WWE title in your main event. Brock Lesnar, my goodness. Lesnar is hell-bent on taking the head off the shoulders of Matt Riddle here tonight, I assure you. Lesnar came into this as a plan. We saw what he did to Kevin Owens in No Holds Barred last month. Not that it was a landslide by any means, but Lesnar certainly up the ante in the most hardcore fashions. I mean, an F5 threw a table at one point last month in Levi Stadium. And now in the confines of the cage, those knuckles to the forehead of Matt Riddle. That is not good. See, Matt Riddle's already starting to be tired. The fatigue is setting in as Brock Lesnar, Sue, Plex City in mine. Brock Lesnar is a shark that smells blood in the water. But Lesnar's playing with his food right now. It's like the appetizer before dinner for Brock Lesnar. You can't underestimate Matt Riddle. He better bring the fight as we are witnessing. Cannot allow a mistake because Riddle will take advantage. So far, I mean, this has been 90% Brock Lesnar, 10% Matt Riddle for my, eye, for my eyes. Again. A close fist. Lesnar is looking to incapacitate the original bro tonight. Oh, wait a minute. I think, I think Matt Riddle might have been busted wide open off those last set of knuckles. Not exactly sure from our vantage point, but if so... Oh, yeah, I believe Matt Riddle has been cut wide open. And that is not going to go well for the endurance of Riddle. Fatigue is already setting in. Damage is already starting to play a factor. And if Riddle is showcasing his wounds... On the top of his forehead, Brock Lesnar's gonna see that target. He's gonna inflict punishment on it. Oh my goodness! The momentum that Riddle was just sent into the beams of the cage with. It is not meant 
for a mortal being. But Brock Lesnar doesn't give a damn. This is a beatdown here in Chicago right now. I do not like Riddle's chances right now. This, this may get uncomfortable, folks. You might want to put the kids to bed early tonight because Brock Lesnar, I said it before, I'll say it again. This, this, this animal's just playing with his food right now. Riddle's busted wide open. Brock Lesnar's just savoring this beatdown that he's been waiting for since May 14th in Vancouver, Canada at Vengeance when Riddle beat him to retain his WWE title. Power bomb with emphatic force. The power, the strength of Lesnar. Riddle is struggling. Every move that Lesnar inflicts, Riddle is having a harder and harder time getting to his feet. Unless it's that time, Lesnar just ragdoll and riddled to his feet. Not by will, by force. The same force that just sent Riddle into the solid steel cage. It is not meant for human flesh. Riddle with a kick to the rib cage. Riddle's trying to come alive. Couple of shots. Never count out the stallion of Monday Night Raw. Big time need a Lesnar. Can Riddle get back in control of this matchup? I don't know, obviously some massive damage already done. Riddle's been busted wide open. His fatigue is gonna set in even earlier. Lesnar has yet to meet the cage. And Riddle's met it on multiple occasions by now. Cage or not, Riddle's gonna keep swinging. Looking for that home run. Looking for that knockout blow. Going for the cover. And Lesnar gets the shoulder up. Remember the modern Rules of these steel cage matches, no eliminations, just pinfall or submission. The goal is to keep the men inside the cage and settle the score decisively. And that is what we will see here tonight at Unforgiven. Lesnar with a reversal. Oh my goodness. Just imagine a gorilla headbutting you dead on. That is basically what Brock Lesnar just did to Matt Riddle. And he's not done yet. Open palms into the lariat. With someone the strength behind Lesnar, you know that isn't just taking the wind out of you for a second or two. That's gonna knock the wind out of Riddle for multiple minutes. Lesnar is back on the offense. Wait a minute, go for German suplex here and Riddle able to get out of it. Nice wherewithal by Riddle. Riddle's got a chance to prove his toughness, prove his intestinal fortitude all over again. And his rise back to possibly challenging for the WWE Championship. We apologize for the voice, but a long weekend. The voice is gonna go by Monday Night Raw tomorrow. Matt Riddle just trying to keep things going. A couple of closed fists of his own on Lesnar. How many of them direct, directly landed where Riddle wanted them to? I don't know, but nonetheless, Riddle has at least got Lesnar down for the moment. Well documented. It's one thing to knock Lesnar off his feet. It's a whole other thing to keep him there. Wait a minute, Riddle. Kick to the side of the head. Oh, Riddle, this is very daring of the original bro. Looking for that submission hold. Trapping up the beast. Riddle's trying to tap out Lesnar in almost this MMA-style fight here tonight in Chicago. The two men with those MMA backgrounds. Lesnar, a former UFC heavyweight champion. And he knows a way to get out of the submission if need be. He knows where Lesnar went to get out of that submission. He went to the bloody head, the crimson mask of Riddle, but Riddle still trying to come alive and rally Windy City behind him. And getting the two, but Lesnar kicks out. Man, that one second makes such a difference. Now Riddle, this is what he's gotta do with whatever's left in the tank at this point in the match. Trying to throw everything at Lesnar. Can't leave anything on the table behind. Tonight, excuse me, you gotta leave it all on the line. All in is the original bro here in Chicago. Oh, and Rizzle, with a bare elbow. Did you see that? Not only was he going for the closed fist, but Riddle elected for the elbow shot to Lesnar. Oh, wait a minute. I think Brock might have been busted open off that elbow. Oh, man. Well, certainly the tide's shifting in an interesting direction. Lesnar smells blood. And it's not just Riddle's anymore, it's his. But did that just wake up the beast incarnate? I don't know, man. Riddle busted Lesnar wide open. The Crimson Mask is flowing. Will that be a detriment to Brock, or will it only light the fire within the beast incarnate? Riddle's avoiding that cage at all costs, and Lesnar just gonna rag doll into the mat with a simple lariat. Beatdown commences. This is 
This is what we expected, the violence between Letter Lesnar and Riddle here tonight. We knew something had to give. We knew tensions were going to boil over. It's Brock setting Riddle a ton upon the top rope. I don't know what the Beast has got in mind. Very rarely do we see him scale the ropes in any capacity here. Sending Riddle for a ride. Over halfway across the ring, Riddle's body just was thrown by the Beast Incarnate. And Lesnar's not done. Lesnar could have easily went for the cover there, possibly won this matchup. But I guess it's more tonight about just, not just victory for Lesnar. He wants that win, but he's not to make a statement to Matt Riddle. Oh, man, it cost him there. Can't underestimate the former WWE champion. Held that title for WrestleMania SummerSlam for a reason. Look at being set in the corner. And Brock Lesnar once again on his tail. Riddle avoids it again as Lesnar maybe Trying to throw him to the other side of the canvas yet again. Sense of urgency out of Riddle. Both these men are just swinging with anything they got. Lesnar whiffing that lariat. Riddle's luck pays him dividends there. Lesnar goes to the corner and there's an elbow strike. This is straight up a fight from pillar to post. A Chicago street fight contained inside this steel cage. Riddle, wait a minute. Could've been going for a cutter there, but Lesnar countered in a big time power slam. I don't know if anybody can match the strength of the beast. Riddle found that out firsthand. Lesnar once again. Every time Lesnar gets in control, the pace slows down. The All-State Arena is a quiet hum. It's almost uncomfortable watching Lesnar inflict this damage on Matt Riddle. And yeah, Riddle is hurt. Oh, goodness. Slingshotted from the top rope into the cage. That could be a concussion there for Matt Riddle. That is not good. Wait a minute. Lesnar with the German. And he's yet to release. Looking to bring Riddle to Sue Plex City. Matt Riddle, his body is basically lifeless inside of the ring. And Brock Lesnar still is not going for the pinfall. The son of a bitch, Brock Lesnar, just end the damn match. Riddle's only got so much left in the tank. I mean, I'm not trying to doubt him here. He can always mount a comeback, but Lesnar... Oh, thought he'd had the belly to belly. There you go, there's Riddle. Nice takedown on the beast. Throwing a couple elbows. Enough to get Lesnar weary. He's got Brock backed up in the corner, and again, Lesnar with the reverse and dragged on Riddle into the post. Back on the top rope. Brock already sent Riddle for a ride. What has he got in mind now? He's just looking to do it again. Well, this time, different position. Superplex to Matt Riddle. Riddle has got to be an excruciating pain right now. Lesnar still not going for the cover. Wait a minute, Lesnar. With an F5 on Matt Riddle. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Go for the damn cover, Brock. Lesnar's, go Lesnar's going for the Kimura. He wants to break the arm of Matt Riddle in the process of winning this match. Oh, Riddle able to reverse it. Oh my goodness, sense of adrenaline, sense of urgency. And Riddle going for the cover. Only a one butt. What has Riddle got in there? What is coming alive right now? Blood still not only flowing out of the body of Riddle, but flowing through the veins. And adrenaline is fueling the original bro to keep on fighting tonight at the All-State Arena. But how much does Riddle realistically have left in the tank? He just took an F5. Lesnar had that Kimura in for a couple of seconds before Riddle rolled out of it. Oh my goodness, and another German. It's just the story of this matchup. Every time Matt Riddle tries to get an advantage, get Chicago rallied behind him. Brock Lesnar just turns the tides in a snap of the fingers, is absolutely having his cake and eating it too tonight. Just end the damn match. He could have went for the cover after the F5. If Riddle wasn't in the position and been so familiar with that Kimura lock, I mean, any normal man would have given up in that spot. Riddle just happens to have that MMA background, paid him dividends that time. He knows a thing or two about this, the full mount from Lesnar, as we've seen multiple times throughout this match. Riddle's hurting, man. 
This is not going well for Matt Riddle. And it's not going to go well for Matt Riddle moving forward. Win, lose, or draw tonight here at Unforgiven. How does one continue to press forward on Monday Night Raw? This is a fight that these two men will never be the same from, especially Matt Riddle. But the man is still coming alive. There's something left in the tank. I don't know if it's blood. I don't know if it's adrenaline. I don't know if it's just the will to win. An absolute desperate time for Matt Riddle in this match. Just doing anything he can, trying to beat Brock Lesnar down. Now the stomps to the heart of the beast. Oh, but Lesnar moves out of the way. Riddle caught him with a kick. Riddle caught him with a shot. Riddle's got to take advantage. Rip toward knee. Go for the cover, Riddle. Riddle's getting fired up, and the Windy City is behind him. Wait a minute. Feed trigger knee by Matt Riddle. And he's not done. This row got in mind going to the top. Floating bro by the original bro. Go for the cover. Not just yet. What is Riddle doing? Riddle's almost, I don't want to say making the same mistake as Brock, but Brock could have easily went for the cover by now. And he, I think he left the window open for Riddle to mount this comeback. But Riddle's got to take advantage. Go for the pin. Go for the kill while you got the beast wounded. Off the floating, bro, off the knees. And now the elbow shots. Just trying to incapacitate the Beast Incarnate. Well, there was a reversal there by Lesnar. Riddle with a couple of shots. DDT by the bro. Now Riddle's got a window of opportunity here. And he better strike while the iron's hot. Oh, wait a minute. Riddle's going submission hold, possibly. Oh my god, almost a figure four variation here. Lesnar is hurt. Lesnar is wounded. Riddle could be going for the submission or possibly a pass out of pain for the Beast. Lesnar trying to hold on and oh. Trying to take out the open legs of Riddle. And there's a shot right to the open wound. That may have been Riddle's best shot right there as Brock Lesnar, the Beast, has awoken in this match. Fisherman suplex. Riddle brought to his feet, and Lesnar going for a second. Look at that image. F5, a bloody beast to a bloody bro. And a three count. Wow. I have no words. That was a cold-hearted display of brutality. Riddle did it his damnedest. He tried. He gave it his all to keep down Brock, but Lesnar was just a different animal tonight, a different beast tonight. And there's no way he was outlasting the war path of the Beast Incarnate. Here is your winner, Brock Lesnar! That is a scary image with blood trickling from an open wound, but the Beast is still standing. Brock Lesnar just sent an emphatic statement, not just to Monday Night Raw, but to all of WWE, that the Beast is back and he hasn't come to play games. A display of violence tonight in Chicago, and Brock Lesnar gets the victory he was hoping for inside the steel cage. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. We are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. Well, after a brutalizing steel cage match moments ago, it is now time to focus towards our main event here at Unforgiven. The WWE Championship is on the line. The visionary, Seth Rollins, defends the gold against the Celtic warrior, Sheamus. 
This has been a collision brewing since early spring of this year. In two matches thus far, they have split the difference in victories, but it was Rollins' win in the first round of the King of the Ring tournament that took this rivalry to the next level. A curb stomp by Rollins on the outside of the ring sent Sheamus packing and unable to compete for over two months. All the while, Rollins would continue his pursuit of winning the WWE Championship through taking down the Money in the Bank contract and cashing it in successfully at SummerSlam. The WWE's very own revolutionary once again has claimed the richest prize, but it was a returning Sheamus that spoiled the fun of Seth freaking Rollins. The Great White of the Red Brand is hell-bent on retribution for those heinous actions displayed by Rollins all those months ago. But now, an even larger prize is at stake in the WWE Championship. The Celtic Warrior Sheamus, the revolutionary Seth Rollins, one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Championship. And it is main event time in Chicago, up next here at Unforgiven. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Championship. It is main event time from the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. The conclusion to this doubleheader weekend. It is Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven. And it is also Fight Night. The Celtic Warrior. The Great White, the leader of the Rolling Brutes, Sheamus, is in the Windy City. And certainly already been a successful evening for Butch and Ridge Holland of the Rolling Brutes, bringing home the WWE World Tag Team titles. Can Sheamus complete the trio? Can it be a banner evening in the history of the Brawling Brutes if Sheamus can leave Chicago tonight as the WWE Champion? There's a big fight feel as Sheamus has been waiting for this one-on-one -on -one altercation since he was put on the shelf by Seth Rollins in June. And of course, the added treat that the WWE title is on the line. Sheamus looking to kill two birds with one stone here tonight in Chicago. But this man, the visionary, the revolutionary, Previously Mr. Money in the Bank, but now the WWE Champion. And with that gold comes the term of the face of Monday Night Raw. Something that Seth Rollins wanted so desperately. He wanted the spotlight on him. He won Money in the Bank, picked his moment correct. And in front of Levi Stadium's sold out capacity crowd four weeks ago, he left with the W around his waist. Seth Rollins may have burned a bridge back in June that he didn't plan on walking across again, but everything always comes back around. Rollins made the bed. Now he's got to sleep in it, and he better be ready for this fired up Irishman in the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, a man who has held the WWE title, the World Heavyweight Championship. He's held every single title there is to hold. A Grand Slam winner is Sheamus. But he ain't done yet. He wants another run at the top of the food chain. And Seth Rollins holds the keys to the kingdom. It is your main event here at Unforgiven in Chicago. Seth Rollins defends the WWE Championship against Sheamus. Let's send things down to the ring for your official pre-match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! And his opponent, from Davenport, Iowa, weighing in at 217 pounds, he is the WWE Champion, Sam! A look at the champion, a look at the challenger, and a look at the gold that is at stake. 
It is main event time. Big fight feel as it's been all night long. We've already seen one title change hands. We are hot off the heels of the most brutal steel cage in recent memories. But now we set our center focus as Sheamus looks not only for payback, but looks to wear that gold around his waist and have this be a banner evening for himself and the rest of the Brawling Brutes. The bell has sounded and we are underway here in Chicago. It'll be very interesting to see how this match is paced, but you know what? Throw that out the window. I think Sheamus is gonna be fired up in the early going, off the knee, taking Rollins for a ride to said knee. The only thing Sheamus needs to be wary of with this kind of momentum is not being overzealous, not letting his anger and his hatred towards Seth Rollins blind the fact that he has an opportunity to become the WWE Champion tonight. He can't allow Rollins to capitalize on a mistake because that is where Seth Rollins can be most dangerous. Sheamus in control since the opening bell about 45 seconds ago. Obviously getting the one count. And obviously Sheamus knows he wasn't going to win the match up there, but the Celtic Warrior just trying to get in the psyche of the Visionary. And Sheamus off the middle buckle with the shoulder block. Classic out of the arsenal of the Great White. Now look at this. Look at the muscle. Celtic Warrior workout's been paying out. But only a one count there, but obviously Sheamus, again, not trying to get the victory just yet. Just trying to get in the psyche of Rollins and do some damage at the same time. Not wait to see what the voice is going to be like tomorrow at Raw. Green Bay, Wisconsin, get ready. Nonetheless, Rollins on the outside, taking a breather from this early onslaught by Sheamus. Referee holding him back, and this is a smart move by Sheamus. Don't let Rollins lure you to the outside of the ring. Could possibly be a mistake if Sheamus took it, but Sheamus not taking the bait. Rollins with a reversal that time. Sheamus has been controlling ever since the opening bell. And Rollins with some power of his own. A man not too far from not too far from Chicago in Davenport, Iowa. And Seth Rollins, who has had many a bottles across, battles across multiple promotions in this windy city. We're going to make some more history tonight with a victory over Sheamus. And a rip toward knee in the early going. These guys are throwing live rounds in the early moments of this matchup. And I expected nothing less. With the animosity that has been across so many of the matches tonight, the tension was bound to boil over. Rollins and Sheamus, the headliner, with the most prestigious prize in the industry on the line. Sheamus has held the gold before, wants to do it again. Opportunities like this don't come around every day. Sheamus needs to take the most advantage of it. Another ripcord knee. Rollins just going to the well with what worked that time. Now Rollins over the top rope. You see how he cradled up his body to get full impact on Sheamus. A maneuver that Seth Rollins' protege at one point, Nathan Frazier from NXT, who's been stealing the show in the Cruiserweight Classic, just advanced yesterday afternoon, has perfected. And Rollins taking the fight to the outside off that dive, sending Sheamus right to the barricade. The outside, ringside, as you saw in the video package. Is where the ante was up between Sheamus and Rollins all those months ago. Sheamus defeated Rollins back in April for a spot in a number one contender's match at Backlash. That did not sit well with Seth Rollins. Eventually, the bad blood led to a six-man tag at Vengeance in May, which we discussed earlier tonight, that led the Brawling Brutes earning a victory over Rollins in the Judgment Day. Of course, Rollins and Sheamus once again met in the first round of the King of the Ring in early June. And that is where Rollins not only secured a victory, at least thought, he got Sheamus out of his sights for good. And the Celtic Warriors back. Every bad blood comes back around, and Rollins better not lose his marbles this early into the match. But I mean, Sheamus will capitalize. One of the toughest superstars to ever grace the squared circle. A swing and a neck breaker by Sheamus. Sheamus not afraid to keep this classic wrestling if he needs to. Again, as we mentioned, Sheamus can't allow a blinded by frustration attitude to cause him to make a mistake that Rollins can capitalize on. And Sheamus is a veteran. He's been around the block. No stranger to big fight fields and really dangerous, bad blood situations. Sheamus knows he needs to compose himself in this match. He can't look past that aspect for the Celtic Warrior. Rollins on the apron. Wait a minute. Sheamus keeping it classic with the 10 beats of the Valdrum. 
And Chicago loving every 10 of it. Rollins taking a fall to the outside and his chest might be the color purple the time we leave Allstate Arena. Sheamus dropping the axe hammer, keeping the fight going. Trying to wear down the WWE Champion. It's reversed by Rollins. Oh, man! Swing blade on the outside. You know, one thing that we really have not discussed about Sheamus over the last few weeks, although it's been nothing but victories for the Celtic Warrior, obviously speaking volumes to his motivation to take out Rollins, but it was a curb stomp on the outside of the ring that put Sheamus on the shelf for months. Sheamus obviously wouldn't have come back if he wasn't 100%, but he's got to be wary, right? He's got to be cautious that Seth Rollins might try to do that again. And if so, Sheamus might not only lose this matchup, he may lose his career. Remains to be seen, but there's Rollins with a shot to the back of the neck. And to retain the WWE title. Not just yet as Sheamus has still got the heart pumping. Sheamus has been on a roll, as has Seth Rollins. This is past Monday on a roll. Sheamus with a victory over Damian Priest. Sheamus has picked up wins against Sol Sokoa, Apollo Crews as well. And then remember, the tag team matchup where Sheamus resurfaced on Monday Night Raw. Sheamus and Shinsuke Nakamura defeating Rollins and Solo on that night. Just a few short weeks before Rollins ended up cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase, which propelled him on a sea of momentum as of late. Victories over Kofi Kingston and Butch on Monday Night Raw. And Sheamus looking to see Rollins take a loss tonight. Very creative maneuver, showcasing the power of the Celtic Warrior. In the Windy City, loving every second of it here tonight. But Sheamus misses off the knee. And there's a mistake that we were talking about. May have been more focused on trying to put the punishment on a man he absolutely despises rather than trying to go for the cover. Seth Rollins back in control, and you see Rollins going back to the well with what has worked for him throughout this match. Not getting pretty, just getting effective. And I think Rollins, as we witness how this matchup play out, is really trying to focus on the neck and the head of Sheamus, realizing those are the injuries that put him on the shelf. And if Rollins can reawaken those injuries per se, reopen those wounds per se, Rollins may have a golden ticket to win this match. Forearms. Knees, kicks. Rollins is all targeting on Sheamus. He could just be trying to soft him up for the curb stomp. Remains to be seen. Nonetheless, Sheamus is down. Rollins goes for the chop to nobody home. And once again, Sheamus muscling up. Rollins sets him out. Into the cover. New champion set to be crowned here in Chicago. No. And just imagine if we get to Green Bay, Wisconsin tomorrow night. And not only are the Brawling Brutes World Tag Team Champions, but Sheamus is the WWE Champion. White noise! And the ladder may be about to come true. Not just yet as Rollins kicks out again. How close was that? The white noise by Sheamus to no avail. Obviously damage done, but Sheamus was desperate for the three count there. Not gonna allow Rollins to swing his way back into this match. The Celtic Warriors on a mission, laser focused. And that doesn't mean Rollins is another reversal. Sheamus not leaving some room for opportunity in this matchup right now. Another reversal there. And this time Rollins takes advantage of it. Seth Rollins may be feeling a sense of urgency after that little file of fury from Sheamus. That white noise might have did some damage on Rollins as once again he takes things to the air and repeats our sentiments from a few minutes ago. Going back to the well with what has worked for him tonight. Not getting super creative, not trying to throw Sheamus off his game, just giving Sheamus what he expected and giving Sheamus the fight that Rollins used to defeat the Celtic Warrior back in June. Just because you know what's coming doesn't mean you can take advantage. Wait a minute, Rollins. Wait a minute. Rollins with a bro kick on Sheamus on the outside. Seth Rollins using Sheamus' own move against him on the outskirts of the squared circle. The backbreaker and bro kick combination. Rollins, we just said a moment ago, not trying to necessarily get too creative against Sheamus, but that's certainly a way to throw the challenger off his game is use his own offense against him. Offense becoming defense for Seth Rollins in that moment. And Sheamus is hurt. Oh no. And Rollins is going for the kill. Curb stop. And that's going to do it. 
Off the bro kick and the curb stomp. No, Sheamus is alive. Sheamus is still fighting. We said it's fight night for a reason. Oh, Rollins is coming unglued right now. Rollins unhinged, hit the bro kick, hit the stomp to no avail. Sheamus is obviously hurt. Obviously not 100% at this point in the match. But Seth Rollins losing his marbles a little bit after not getting the three count, which Sheamus looks to take advantage of. We may be in Chicago, but there's a slam all the way from Alabama. Now Rollins back up to his feet. Oh man, are we about to start seeing the pendulum's momentum swing back and forth as Sheamus may be seeking some desperate maneuvers in this match. Rollins now, oh, face first off the canvas. Oh, that is not, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Sheamus has been busted wide open, folks. After the bare knuckles, the kicks, the stomp. Sheamus' forehead becoming soft tissue to open up, and the blood is now trickling from the Irishman. And that is going to be a target that the WWE Champion looks to focus on. That is not going to be good for Sheamus. He is really pouring out right now. Wait a minute. Celtic Warrior, we said sense of urgency a moment ago. The smell of his own blood might have woke him up a little bit. Rollins on the top. What has Sheamus got in mind here? Looking to send Rollins for another ride. Oh, man. Man, look at the forehead of Sheamus. The Warrior. Sporting battle wounds. And Chicago is coming unglued for the champion and the challenger. On the shoulders, victory roll. Sheamus starting to come alive, but does he have it in him to win the WWE Championship tonight in Chicago, Illinois? Rollins on top again. What has Sheamus got in mind? Oh, wait a minute. Could be looking for a super. Victory roll from the middle buckle. That's gonna do it. Sheamus has won matches in the past with that maneuver, but it's not gonna pay him dividends tonight. Close call. Almost the book being closed on Seth Rollins' WWE title reign, but Sheamus is still one second away from championship glory. Meanwhile, he's at ringside. And Sheamus better be careful. Clearing off the announce table, the Celtic Warrior realizes that the ante must be up the same way Rollins did back in June. Sheamus has not forgotten. It was right here at ringside where the curb stomp that put Sheamus on the shelf took place. An exposed announce table could mean disaster for the WWE Champion if he does not get back into this match. Sheamus got to keep his eye on the count. Humphrey's at a count of three, count of four. Obviously, Sheamus can't win the title via count out tonight. Off the apron with a knee, and he stuck it to Rollins. That'll certainly scramble the eggs of the WWE Champion. Smart by Sheamus to break the count right there. He knows he can't win the title via count out. Rollins can retain. Only benefits Rollins really being on the outside from a result perspective. Speaking of Rollins, off the knee, heads to the top. Going for a shot, but Sheamus gets out of the way. Celtic Warrior avert, avoids disaster. And up takes the champion off his feet with the STO. And Sheamus is feeling it. The Windy City still fired up as they've been all night long here at Unforgiven and still pouring their love for the Celtic Warrior. Chicago, Illinois very well may be brawling Brutes territory. Butch and Ridge Holland succeeded an hour ago here at Unforgiven. Sheamus looking to have the same luck against a tough challenger in the Revolutionary. And raking up these big time maneuvers on Seth. There's a counter, much needed by the WWE Champion. Rollins again, face plants Sheamus this time. Sheamus might have hit every turnbuckle on the way down. And again, Seth Rollins looking to go back to the well with what has worked. Third time, three-peat by Rollins with the dive over the top. Trails himself up, an explosion. Oh, wait a minute, Sheamus with a counter at ringside. And this is, how, this is where superstars are made, ladies and gentlemen, in the deep rounds, in championship rounds, when the challenger and champion are so fatigued yet still fighting. You want to be the man on Monday Night Raw? You got to outlast these desperate moments. Sheamus is showcasing his battle wounds. 
And now Sheamus is headed to an uncharacteristic position on the top rope. To the outside with a shoulder block on the champion. Throwing caution in the wind in the means of success. Sheamus is fired up. He has got the WWE Champion down, and the Champion is hurt. And Sheamus could be near a victory if he can get this thing back inside the ring and score three. three. Referee at a count of three right now. Sheamus once again heading back inside the ring. Looking to break the count right there. Again, Sheamus cannot win the title via count out. No special stipulations on this match tonight with Rollins. Good old school classic championship rules. Now Sheamus dropping the axe hammer. Rollins, no idea where he was right there. Sheamus capitalized on the MIA whereabouts of the champion. Now sends him back inside the squared circle. Sheamus smells blood in the water, and it might not be his own. He could be looking to seek and destroy and win the WWE title. Nice axe hammer, wait a minute. Counter by Rollins, and what strength by the champion. Big time counter by the visionary. Both men dazed, but Sheamus the first to crack. Rollins is showing signs of life, but it may not be enough. Sheamus may be hitting on all different cylinders right now. Running power slam to win the title. No, Rollins kicks out again. What a main event clash here tonight at the All-State Arena in Chicago. Sheamus, the challenger. Seth Rollins, the champion. The fight continues. And once again, Sheamus on the outside. And remember, on the bottom right of your screen, cleared off the announce table a few moments ago, paying homage to Cactus Jack with the cactus elbow off the apron. Sheamus might have his sights set on the announce table. Why else bring Rollins back to the outside where he can't win the match just yet? Well, remains to be seen, but Rollins trying to turn the tides. Knee right to the injured rib cage. Oh man! Right into the steel steps. Seth Rollins trying to get brutal in this championship match. Realizing it must be a must to keep down Sheamus. He's just trying to get his wits about himself on the outside, but now Rollins dropping the Celtic Warrior in the DDT. Man, we are witnessing a classic battle of good and evil. A classic battle of a warrior versus a revolutionary. The main event, the lights are on bright. Go big or go home. Title's on the line. Fight continues on the outside. We have seen a lot of brawling between Rollins and Sheamus the last few minutes. Only going inside really to break the count. And they continue the fight on the outskirts. And Rollins trying to open up the already open wound of Sheamus. Fatigue's got to be setting in, maybe even a little bit earlier than it would for the Celtic Warrior, thanks to that target on his head. We saw how it played a factor in Matt Riddle's momentum in his steel cage moments ago. Sheamus feeling the same detriment. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Rollins has got his eyes on the announce table that Sheamus cleared off, and it may come back to haunt the Celtic Warrior. This is not good for the challenger. Rollins! with a power bomb through the announce table. Holy hell. Seth Rollins is godsend focused on eliminating Sheamus from in-ring competition tonight. Right through the table that Sheamus exposed and Sheamus is hurt. The Celtic Warrior is wounded. The number one contender is down. And Rollins continuing the onslaught at ringside. Referee at a count of six. Rollins gonna send Sheamus inside the squared circle. Sheamus has gotta try to wake up. Because if not, Rollins is gonna put him to sleep for good. Off the top. Vintage frog splash by the Visionary. He's not going for the cover. Rollins wants to put the final nail in the coffin. A second curb stop to Sheamus. A wounded warrior. Falls to the visionary in the main event. Wow, what a matchup. 
a physical altercation that could have went either way between Sheamus and Seth Rollins. But in the end, the open wound of Sheamus did not pay him dividends. The exposed table coming back to haunt him and not one but two curb stomps leads Seth Rollins to the ultimate victory here tonight at Unforgiven. Here is your winner, and still, the WWE Champion, Seth Freakin' Rollins! Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us all weekend long, and good night from Chicago, Illinois. An amazing, unforgiven event, which leaves you with still the WWE Champion, the visionary, the revolutionary, Seth Freakin' Rollins! Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.